In this movie, you'll find out more about how to determine the energy demand of the heating, cooling, and ventilation systems of the building. For architects and their clients, the most important energy-related question is determining the overall energy demand of the building. ARCHICAD's Energy Evaluation is able to provide quick and very accurate building energy demand calculations. Let's display the Supply Building System panel on the Energy Model Review Palette. Here you can see all the building systems listed, heating, cooling, and ventilation. Let's open the Building System Settings dialog now to have a closer look at the details of each system type. Thermal blocks with heating and cooling types not yet specified refer to areas without any mechanical heating or cooling systems. In this case, it's possible to make a preliminary evaluation and define the heating capacity of our building. Heating can be achieved by district or central on-site supplies. After specifying on-site heating and identifying one or more heating equipment types, the internal temperature constraints are activated in the assigned operation profile. Let's select boiler or furnace for the heating type and see how it works. Let's open the Operation Profiles dialog and display the Daily Profile Editor. Please note that the working hours on workdays have a minimum and a maximum threshold for the internal temperature. At the same time, the non-working period does not have such constraints for the internal temperature. Energy Evaluation considers this information together with the shape of the building, insulation, and external temperature to determine the energy demand of the building. If the temperature rises above the maximum or falls below the minimum values provided at the operation profile, then the energy demand of a cooling or heating system will be automatically added to adjust the overall energy demand. If no minimum or maximum internal temperature value is set for an operation profile, then the internal temperature will be influenced only by the building envelope characteristics and by the external weather conditions. In this case, no energy demand adjustments will be carried out in the corresponding thermal blocks. If no heating or cooling system type is assigned to an operation profile, then no energy demand adjustments will be carried out in the corresponding thermal blocks. As for ventilation, there are three mechanical ventilation types available. Supply, Exhaust, and supply and exhaust ventilation types. Supply ventilation systems rely on fans to drive fresh air into the thermal block. Exhaust ventilation means that a mechanical system will be provided only for the removal of exhaust air. Supply and exhaust ventilation means that a mechanical system will be provided for both the supply and the removal of air. The air exchange rate can be set with different time ranges in the operation schedule. Here we can reduce the energy loss due to ventilation by scheduling the ventilation intensity on a daily and weekly basis. The ventilation intensity can be reduced for the non-working time periods. We can change the unit of the airflow amount with the help of the pop-up list. Mechanical ventilation systems may or may not have air-to-air -air heat recovery units. The dedicated checkbox specifies this setting. An air-to-air -air energy recovery system can regain a percentage of the heat content of mechanically expelled ventilation air. Let's see a couple of examples on how to adjust various properties of the building systems. Let's select the management thermal block from the list of the energy model review palette. And let's display the building systems palette. The management thermal block should be a thermostat controlled area equipped with mechanical ventilation. Let's select boiler or furnace under the on-site equipment option for heating and cooling systems. Select the supply and exhaust option for the ventilation. Let's apply all these adjustments by clicking the OK button in this dialog. Let's proceed and select the staircase thermal block from the list. Let's display the Building Systems dialog again. We will select the Not Yet Specified option for both heating and cooling systems because we don't have to keep a temperature constraint here. Let's select the Supply and Exhaust Ventilation option. Let's select the Entrance Thermal block from the list and open the Building Systems dialog. 
Let's define the not yet specified option for both heating and cooling systems and select the natural ventilation type. applying a 1 per hour air exchange rate from the operation schedule dialog. Finally, let's see a unique example. The circulation thermal block is located in the middle of the building. This has staircases and corridors. It also has a curtain wall facade at the entrance of the building, and it also has a glazed top above the entrance. Typically, this circulation area should have a thermostat-controlled heating and cooling system. In this example, we will utilize this atrium area as a buffer zone. We will define controlled natural ventilation for this. Nighttime ventilation is typical for those climates where the air is cool at night and can be used to cool the building down. During the winter time, solar gain can be provided with the help of the very same glazed atrium. To achieve the above, we will select not yet specified or natural for both the heating and cooling systems. We will define a supply and exhaust ventilation system. However, we will set the airflow to zero.